Hello everyone, my name is Mike Grady. I'm a recent graduate of RIT's Industrial Design Program. I've been asked by Hector Silva to talk about design sketching and how to learn it effectively. Drawing has been an uphill battle for me as long as I've been doing it. I first started sketching my senior year of high school when I first learned about product design as a career. Because of that, I was terrified because I knew that when I entered the workforce, I would need to compete with many, many other designers who had been drawing for as long as they could remember. Because of that, I looked at whatever books, videos, tutorials, and other resources I could find in order to try and catch up with all these other people who had been in it for longer than I had. Although this time period was very nerve-wracking for me at first, I'm glad I went through it because although I still have a lot more to learn, I found out that I absolutely love drawing as it's an exceptionally useful tool that can be used to communicate ideas clearly, concisely, and in ways that you just couldn't really do through mere oratory or CAD work. So that being said, I'm going to introduce you to my seven principles of learning. These were the, the basic principles I applied to myself when I was first starting out, and I found them to be very helpful in strategizing how I was going to learn these um, approaches best. So firstly, I strongly recommend practicing smarter, not harder. One of the complaints I had when I was first learning to draw was that it was sometimes difficult to ask for advice and I'd have to strategize how I would phrase questions. Because when I would ask someone how I could get better, they would usually just tell me, oh, just practice more. And although practice is an integral part of improving, practicing just for the sake of practice is not the best use of time. Instead, it's better to practice with a goal in mind. Uh, for example, if you had a hard time drawing shoes, like for example this video here, <laughs> Um, research shoe manufacturing, proportions, foot anatomy, and other relevant information that then keep drawing shoes until you're finally happy with your result. Secondly, I strongly suggest starting small. So drawing is kind of like working out. I'm an extremely skinny person and during sports in high school I was often teased because I was like the weakest guy in the team. It was quite funny. If I decided to start working out and build up muscle right now, I would have to strategize how I would do so. If I were to just go to the gym and try to bench press my own body weight right off the bat, I would fail miserably, get embarrassed, probably get injured, and probably not want to work out ever again. The same thing applies to drawing. It's very, very tempting to undertake ambitious projects when you're starting out, but without a concrete understanding of foundations, it's very likely that the drawing won't turn out as you planned originally. And for a lot of people, this can get really discouraging. And I recommend instead taking your time, learning the smaller things incrementally and gradually building up to that point. This, however, can mean that the first few months, maybe even the first year, will be incredibly boring as you will be learning drawing how to, how to draw a correct cube or cylinder or how to shade these primitive forms, etc., etc. And so it won't be very gratifying, but at the end of it, you will be glad you did that. Next is, I strongly recommend minding the details. Now when I say this part, it's easy to assume that I'm referring to details such as within the drawing, like uh, color, part lines, material, etc. But in actuality, what I'm talking about are the small details of drawing that are easily overlooked. When you watch others draw, look at the different mannerisms and behaviors that they have, such as the angle at which they hold their pens. How many fingers they're using when they hold their pen? Are they clenching it in a fist or do they have a very delicate uh, hand to it? How often do they rotate the page? How hard does it look like they're pressing? Do they have any pieces of paper underneath their page? And many other small considerations. These details are often instinctual for someone who's experienced, but for someone new to the sketching process, they're extremely important and although often overlooked, they must be considered. Next, I would set goals, not quotas. I personally found that the best way to kill interest in something is to set a daily requirement. This is true for sketching. So things such as spending an hour a day sketching or doing a sketch a day or things along those lines, in my experience, can actually be detrimental. I found that this works great for about a week and then it starts to seem like a chore, and the moment that anything starts to become a chore, it becomes a regular mental battle to get yourself to do it consistently. Instead, approach it with a mindset of spending however much time it takes to learn something, whether it's 10 minutes or 8 hours. So there's some days where I barely get in 20 minutes to sketch, and then there's some days where I just spent the whole day drawing. 
So for me, this helped to make it seem less like something that I, I had to do rather than what I, I got to do. A good example of this is when you binge watch a show on Netflix, for example. A uh, few, few people think to themselves, I'm going to make myself watch one episode a day. Um, and uh, this will help me get through it. Instead, you often get hooked on a good story or something that really appeals to you, and then you watch however many episodes it takes to find out what you want to know. I've found that if you apply this mentality to your learning, it makes it seem much less tedious and much more exciting. The end result is that you'll still practice every day, but it won't seem nearly as dull, and it'll actually seem more like a treat at the end of the day. Next, this one might seem kind of like a no-brainer, but it's often overlooked, is observe the world around you. So if you don't know what something looks like, you won't really be able to draw it. So I, I recommend not just looking at things, but studying them, looking up anatomical textbooks. So how do the muscles interact with each other? How do the biceps brachii and the brachialis help the arm to flex? Uh, study manufacturing processes, so how will this cause a part line, or how will this cause uh, these two joints to go together? And just taking photos of everything whenever possible, because understanding how things work and how they're made will help you figure out how to draw them in a way that makes it look credible and realistic. This is true even if you're drawing things that aren't even real, like sci-fi robots or spaceships. Those often have to be grounded in reality, so understanding how reality works will help you create more realistic drawings. Next is just get a good understanding of your tools. So a lot of people say that it's the artist, not the tool, that creates a drawing. And this is true, but it doesn't really tell the whole story. An adept draftsman will have the fund foundational skills that they need to utilize almost anything to make good drawings. The beginner, however, won't understand basic drawing principles and might wonder if what they're doing is correct. If you're starting out, I strongly suggest watching videos online of people drawing and buying just a set of whatever they're using. If you're curious about what I use, for example, I usually use a Zebra F301 ballpoint pen or big round stick just on cheap, ordinary, everyday printer paper. Uh, if I'm working digitally, I use usually Adobe Photoshop on a Wacom 13 HD, but I've lately been going into uh, Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. But that being said, the tools don't matter as much. It's mostly just getting a sense of consistency and not hopping from one tool to the next to the next to the next. Next and last is fail. Fail early, fail often, and fail now. So success is built upon a foundation of failure. So some of the best advice I ever got was that it's better to do a lot of fast, quote-unquote, bad sketches than to spend days and days on one particular drawing. Because no matter how much you love it as soon as you finish it and you think, oh man, this is the best thing I've ever done, you won't be able to look at it for a year from now. You'll probably think, oh gosh, that's, that's horrible. So every drawing you make, you learn something new. And if you make lots of drawings, you will learn a lot faster. Now, that being said, proceed with caution with this part. Because I've sometimes seen people learn or apply that too legalistically. And instead of really drawing things correctly, they often think, well, I'm just going to draw 100. Say they're learning, trying to learn how to draw hands. They're like, I'm just going to draw 100 hands a day. And that'll help me learn how to draw hands. And that's also working harder, not smarter, because in, uh, one of the problems is if you have to spend days working on a one hand, you're not going to learn much because you're just looking at that one hand and not learning anything new. But if you're also spending time drawing 100 hands well, without really stopping to think about it, then you're just going to build in bad habits and it's actually going to get worse than better. So I would, for example, in this case, look at a bunch of hands, study their anatomy. How do the, the interosseal muscles interact with the hand? How, where are the fatty pads, the thenar group of the thumb, etc.? And then think about how to draw them, and then draw 20. So it's not really uh, an, indoor, an exorbitant amount of hands that aren't really all that good, or it's also not like this one hand that took you days to do and won't really be that useful for you in the one or two months. 
So find a common a middle ground between drawing too much that's just ugly and drawing not enough where that's just be perfect or what you might think is perfect. So that wraps up my tips on learning how to draw. Drawing's an incredibly useful tool to have in your arsenal, and I strongly encourage you to keep at it. In every single internship or job I've had, sketching was an integral part of my work, and had I not studied how to draw, I wouldn't have gotten them in the first place. Additionally, drawing's just a great way to meet people. I've lost count of how many friends and acquaintances I've made just by bringing my sketchbook around to social events or classes, etc., and other gatherings. So it's not only a useful tool, but it's fun. People are very excited to see that. And that will benefit you because in the business world, you'll be working with lots of very smart people, such as engineers, marketing, etc. And they will have their own set of skills. And seeing your skill in this field will impress them. And they will respect you more for it because if you just go in and say, oh, well, I'm just an idea man, but don't lack the foundational skills required to communicate those ideas concisely and in a really exciting and interesting manner, it's often hard to get people excited about your ideas because it's not entirely fleshed out or cohesive. And so drawing can be a very, very strong asset and will help you bring your ideas to life. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, you can email me at mbgrady93 at gmail.com. You can look me up at www.mikegradydesign.com or send me a message on Instagram at mgrady underscore ID. I try to respond as quickly as possible and I hope to keep in touch. Thank you.